This is Abbey Street in Carlisle. Most northern towns still have old streets with surfaces like this. Who said a busy street gathers no moss? The roughly squarish blocks or sets are of a very hard rock called quartz dolerite. The rock for these hand-fashioned sets came from quarries in Northumberland. The quarrymen called it whin or windstone after the wind sill. The wind sill stretches across Northumberland from Greenhead to Bambra in the northeast. It was formed when molten material from beneath the Earth's crust was intruded into the layers of sedimentary rocks. The molten material eventually cooled and solidified to form the igneous rock of the Huin Sill. Later Earth movements tilted the rocks and the more resistant wind formed a series of escarpments which can be seen in this aerial photograph. To the bottom right is one of the windstone quarries. A map such as this shows the solid rock beneath the surface materials. The Bellingham sheet was first surveyed in the 19th century by a geologist called Hugh Miller. In the 1960s it was resurveyed by a friend of mine, D.V. Frost. It took him seven years. Running across the area is the wind sill, shown in red. Blue is limestone and brown is sandstone. Our first view of the landscape of the wind sill is on the A69 as we approach Green Head. At Walltown Turret, near the Roman Army Museum, we see how the Romans used the north-facing wind scarp as a natural protection on which to perch their wall. These lesser escarpments are of limestone and sandstone. Nearby is one of the now unused quarries from which the windstone was extracted. It produced huge quantities of sets and road chippings over many years. Obviously a labour-intensive industry. East of Walltown is the rather smaller Caulfields Quarry, which closed in 1950. This shot shows the path of the wall on top of the escarpment. The extensive quarry working machinery was all removed by the Northumberland National Park authorities before the flooding. The small lake is used to train police divers. Our next view is at Steel Rig and the impressive Crag Lough, now a popular attraction for rock climbers. The Roman wall follows the wind sill from just east of Green Head to the North Tyne Valley. It, it then strikes northeastwards across Northumberland whilst the wall goes on to Newcastle and Wall's End. Windstone is still quarried for road chippings at Barrisford Quarry in mid Northumberland.
Our next sighting of the wind sill is on the northeast coast at Craster. The little harbour was built by the quarry owners to enable them to export windstone. Nowadays, the small fishing village is quite famous for kippers, smoked here at Messrs. Robson and Son. We then took the Dunstanborough Road on a short walk which leads to the castle of that name. It was built in the 13th century and relies on an outcrop of windstone for its solid foundations. The beach below the castle is littered with blocks of windstone. An artist's impression gives us an idea of what it looked like at the time of John of Gaunt. The castle itself is built of a softer, more easily worked sandstone. The honeycomb weathering in the soft sandstone has produced an interesting pattern in the walls of the gatehouse. The castle figured in the Wars of the Roses, but it could not stand up to the cannon fire of those times. Since those days it has been largely in ruins. This is the view to the north, looking towards Embleton Bay. Both the National Trust and English Heritage are involved in preserving the castle in its present state. Our next port of call is to Sea Houses for a trip round the Farne Islands. The busy little town is a hot spot for tourists. Here the wind sill is in the form of a group of islands off the coast northeast of sea houses. Mid September is not the best time to see the birds, but we could see where they'd been. This is the modern longstone lighthouse. The original was closely associated with Grace Darling and her family. The seals were awaiting their pups due to arrive in late October. This property, next to the ruins of a lighthouse, is occupied from March to October by National Trust wardens. They look after the birds and the seals.
We landed on Inner Farm. The outcrop of Windstone has produced some spectacular cliffs. The column-like structure of the Wynn resembles the rock structure on the island of Staffa. The Inner Farm is now a bird sanctuary looked after by the National Trust. It was occupied for some 900 years by hermits and monks, the best known being St Cuthbert, who retired here in 678, remaining until his death in 684. The little chapel was restored in the 1860s. The 17th century woodwork was rescued from Durham Cathedral. It contrasts with the 20th century mouse on the altar cross carved by Mousy Thompson from Kilburn. The one remaining 14th century window is now filled in and only visible from the outside. A memorial to Grace Darling is on an inner wall of the chapel. On leaving the farms, we made for the next coastal outcrop of the Windsill. It is the site of Bambra Castle. Again, the castle itself is made of sandstone, but unlike Dunstanborough, it is not in ruins. It was bought by Lord Armstrong in the 1890s and fully restored so that in its present state it is regarded as one of the finest castles in Britain. And what a coastline! Pity the weather isn't always like this. From the beach to the north of the castle, we could see the inner farm, which we'd left only a few hours previously. We could also make out Lindisfarne Castle, our destination for the following day. The castle is sited on the most northerly outcrop of the Windsill on Holy Island. Holy Island is some three to four miles offshore, but can be reached via a causeway at low tide. An artist's impression gives us an idea of what Lindisfarne Priory was like in former times. As we walked round the old priory, the mist was closing in. We had not expected this after the beautiful weather of the day before. This is what we should have seen. Northumberland is quite an impressive county with plenty of landscape highlights many of which are due to the quartz dellerite in outcrops of the wind sills.